In this video, we're going to discuss the law of cosines, which you can imagine is probably pretty similar to the law of sines. It's another rule that we can use to solve triangles, which are not right triangles. So the law of cosines is used whenever we are given two sides and the angle between them. or we are just given all three sides of a triangle. Then we can use the law of cosines to solve the triangle. So the law of cosines has three different ways of writing it. It says, if triangle ABC has sides of length little a, little b, and little c, opposite vertices, capital A, capital B, and capital C, then we have three different ways of writing this. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a which can also be written solved for cosine of A. You would get cosine of A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. Those are both equivalent, um, equivalent equations. One of them's just solved for the A squared and the other one's solved for cosine of A, but it comes from the exact same setup. So I would suggest that if you're going to be memorizing these, you just memorize one of the versions. If you memorize this first version, you can find the second version just by solving for cosine of A. Another part of the law of cosines is that B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of B or cosine of B equals a squared plus c squared minus b squared all over 2ac. So again, just one of the versions of number two is sufficient because you can find the other version just by algebraic manipulation. And the last thing our law of cosines tells us is that c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of C, or equivalently, cosine of C equals A squared plus B squared minus C squared all over 2AB. So notice that all three of these versions are very, very similar, it just depends on which thing you're solving for, A, B, or C, whether we're talking sides or the angles, which one you need to use. And the way you choose which version you need is based on which angle you're given or what angle you're trying to find. So let's just do an example solving a triangle utilizing this law of cosines. Solve triangle ABC with angle B equals 61 degrees, side C equals 19, and side A equals 28 to one decimal place. Well, just like we did with law of signs, I'm going to draw a sketch of a triangle that's not going to be accurate, but just to help me organize my thoughts. B is 61 degrees, C is 19 and A is 28. And so I can see that I need to find side B and angles A and C. Now I'm gonna start by finding side B. I can figure out side B using my law of cosines and using the version that involves cosine of angle B. So using my law of cosines, I know B squared equals a squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of angle B. Plugging in the info that I have, B squared equals 28 squared plus 19 squared minus 2 times 28 times 19 
times the cosine of 61 degrees. This tells me B squared equals, I would get 1,145 minus 1,064 cosine of 61 degrees. And that means B is equal to the square root of all of that. I would type that into my calculator, making sure my calculator is in degree mode first. And I get B is approximately 25.1. So let me fill that in here. 25.1 is side length B. So now I just need to find angles A and C. And I could use the law of cosines again, but I'm going to use the law of sines just because I find that one a little easier to remember. So I'm going to find angle C using my law of sine. So according to my law of sines, I know that B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. So I have 25.1 over sine of 61 degrees equals my C, which was 19, over sine of capital C. This tells me that sine of capital C is equal to 19 times sine of 61 degrees divided by 25.1. So that means my angle C is equal to sine inverse of all of that. So I type that into my calculator, again, making sure that I am in degree mode, and I get this is approximately 41.5 degrees. So I'll fill that in on my triangle. And then all I have left to find is angle A, and I don't have to use my law of sines or my law of cosines. I can just use the fact that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I'm just going to fill that in here. Angle A has to equal 180 degrees minus my angle B, which was 61 degrees, minus my angle C, which was 41.5 degrees. And I get that angle A would be 77.5 degrees. And there we have it. We've solved that triangle using the law of cosines. Now, I could have used the law of cosines a second time to find either my angle A or C, rather than using the law of sines, it should not matter either way. But do be warned that if you are using one of these where you end up rounding your decimals, then you could end up with potentially slightly different answers than someone else might get, depending on how you've rounded it and at what point in the problem you have rounded. So it's always best to not round things until the very, very end to keep your answers as accurate as possible. Now let's do another example using our brand new law of cosines. So solve triangle ABC with side A equals 62, side B equals 48, and side C equals 41, and we're going to use one decimal place again. So this time, I'm given all the sides of my triangle and none of the angles. So I'm going to start using a law of cosines, and I'm just going to choose to solve for angle A first. So my law of cosine says that cosine of angle A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. And then I can just plug in all my side values to get a 48 squared plus a 41 squared minus 62 squared over 2 times 48 times 41. So I have cosine of A 
is equal to 141 over 3,936. And to then to find my angle A, I just have to do an inverse cosine of that 141 over 3,936. Type that into my calculator, making sure I'm in degrees because we've been working with degrees while solving our triangles. And I get 87.9 degrees to the nearest tenth. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and find angle B, and I'm going to use the law of cosines again. Um, it is possible to use a law of sines instead, but since I used law of sines on the last problem, I'm going to use law of cosines twice on this problem. So solving for angle B, using my law of cosines again, cosine of angle B is equal to A squared plus C squared minus B squared over 2AC. So I get 62 squared plus 41 squared minus 48 squared all over 2 times 62 times 41. And this tells me that cosine of B is equal to 3,221 over 5,084, which means B is the inverse cosine of that number, which when I type it into a calculator and round to one decimal place, I get 50.7 degrees. And then to finish this up, I could do yet another law of cosines if I wanted to, to find angle C, but it's much easier to just subtract angles A and B from 180 degrees to get angle C. And I get 41.4 degrees for angle C. And then we finish solving that triangle. So you can see that both the law of sines and the law of cosines come in handy for solving triangles when it's not a right triangle. All right, let's do another example using this law of cosines, but using it with an application. So we have a Coast Guard ship is on a training run and leaves its base at 16 knots, which remember was nautical miles per hour. on a course of north 82 degrees east. Three hours later, a distress call comes in from a cargo ship. located 180 nautical miles from base. At a bearing of north 48 degrees east. And the first thing we're going to answer is how far is the Coast Guard ship from the cargo ship. And that's just going to be to one decimal place. Well, to figure out what's going on in this problem, it's probably going to help if we draw a picture first. So we're gonna draw a picture representing how far the ship is from the base and how far the Coast Guard ship is from base and appropriate angles. So 
So I'm going to say right here at point A, that's going to be my base. Point C is going to be the location of the Coast Guard ship. And I have where B is, that's going to be where my cargo ship is. And we have more info that we can fill in here. First, I know that my Coast Guard ship was going at 82 degrees. It was north 82 degrees east. So it's this green angle is 82 degrees. And I know that my cargo ship had a bearing of 48 degrees east of north. Let me grab another color. Hopefully the orange works. This orange angle here is 48 degrees east of north. So that tells me I can figure out what this angle A is right here. Angle A is equal to my 82 degrees minus 48 degrees, which is going to be 34 degrees. That's just this angle right here. I can also figure out my distance C here, and they gave me my distance B. My distance B was 180 nautical miles, and my distance C We were told that the Coast Guard ship was traveling at 16 knots for three hours. So I get 48 nautical miles away from base. So now we have an angle and two sides. We can use the law of cosines to find side A, which is the distance between the Coast Guard ship and the cargo ship. So using my law of cosines, I know that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. So that distance A squared equals 180 squared plus 48 squared minus 2 times 180 times 48 times cosine of 34 degrees. So A squared equals, we get 34,704 minus 17,280 cosine of 34 degrees. And that means A is equal to the square root of all of that. So I would type that into my calculator and round it to one decimal place and I get 142.8 nautical miles. So I know that this cargo ship is about 142.8 nautical miles away from our Coast Guard ship. All right, so then I have part B to answer. Part B wants to know what bearing should the Coast Guard follow? to reach the cargo ship. So let me do, redraw a rough sketch of what we had. Here was A, here's where our cargo ship C is, here, or sorry, 
Our Coast Guard ship C, the cargo ship is up at B. And I want to find that angle. Just to make it clear, I want to find an angle Mark that angle in green. I want this little angle right here. That will get me my bearing. It's going to be something east of north, but I don't know what that angle is yet. However, what I do know is I know this angle was 82 degrees. And using geometry, I know since that angle is 82 and my lines going through A and this vertical line through C are going to be parallel. I know that this angle down here is also 82 degrees. And so if I can find my angle C, which I'm going to mark in black, I'll be able to eventually figure out what angle in green is. So first let's find angle C. Using my law of cosines, I know that cosine of C is equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AB. And all of that info was on our previous part A. My A was equal to 142.8, B was 48, and C was 180. So let me just fill all of that in. And that gives me cosine of C is equal to negative 9,704.16 over 13,708.8 and so I get C is inverse cosine of that fraction. Which is approximately 135.1 degrees. So I know this angle here in black is 135.1 degrees. But the angle I want is just that little itty bitty angle that I marked in green. Well, the good news is I can figure that out now because my 82 degree angle and the portion of this 135.1 degree angle that is not marked in green, they are supplementary angles adding up to that straight line. So I know that I have another angle here Let me calculate that. 135.1 degrees minus 82 degrees is equal to 98. No, sorry, I did that wrong. I was saying it right and then I confused myself. So my 82 degrees and this portion of my 135.1 degree angle should add up to 180 degrees. 180 degrees minus 82 degrees is 98 degrees. So I have, let me grab another color, that will help me. This red angle right here is 98 degrees. So the green angle that I want is equal to my 135.1 degrees minus my 98 degrees. The angle we want is 135.1 degrees minus 98 degrees, which is 37.1 degrees. So that green angle that I was looking for is 37.1 degrees. And now I have my bearing. I have 37.1 degrees east of north. So I would write my bearing as north. 37.1 degrees east. 
And that's the bearing that the Coast Guard has to travel in order to meet the cargo ship. So that shows you how the law of cosines can be used in a real world example as well to help find how to navigate in the ocean. And we also have, just like we did for law of sines, we also have a way to calculate the area of a triangle that's related to our law of cosines. This is called Heron's formula for the area of a triangle. And it says, given a triangle with sides A, B, and C, then the area is given by area equals the square root of S times S minus A s minus b and s minus c where s equals one half times a plus b plus c and this is called the semi-perimeter it is half of the perimeter of the triangle so let's just do an example just using the formula once to calculate the area of the triangle Find the area of a triangle with sides A equals 15.4 meters, B equals 22.6 meters, and C equals 26 meters to the nearest square meter. We're going to be using this formula here. Area is equal to the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, where S is half of my perimeter. So I'm gonna start by finding this S. S is equal to half of my A plus my B, plus my C. So I know this S is equal to half of 64, which is equal to 32. Now this tells me that my area is equal to the square root of that S times my S minus A times my S minus B times my S minus C. And I've just filled in my A, B, and C, and my S. Now I just have to simplify this and I'll have my area of the triangle. So my area is equal to the square root of 32 times 16.6 times 9.4 times 6. So I have my area is the square root of 29,959.68, which if I type that into my calculator and round it to the nearest whole square meter, I get it's approximately 173 square meters. And there we go. So that's much easier than trying to manipulate our triangle by drawing a vertical height so that we have right angles and so we can use the one half base times height formula. Sometimes it's much more convenient to use a formula like this where the only info we have is all of the side lengths. So this formula is perfect for that. And that's all I have for you today on the law of cosines. 
If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. Or if you're a current student, you can also ask in office hours, in email, or in class. And I'll see you guys next time.